Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button. And please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Friday's, yes, Friday's edition of the DC Daily, where we have a lot to talk about. This is a place where we can share our love for comics. CBMs, comic book movies, comic book TV shows, the love of storytelling in its purest form and be positive and share our opinions, talk about things we don't like, talk about things that we love. And today we are talking about the very, very exciting news because I am excited about Black Adam. I think it's a very ambitious picture and I have a lot of time for Dwayne The Rock Johnson who's been pushing for this film and working on this film for many, many years. And yesterday we heard some very, very exciting news. It's about Noah Centennio being cast as Atom Smasher. Who is Atom Smasher? I don't know. I don't know the character. I've heard of him a couple of times. So let's give this a read because a Hollywood reporter are going to tell us everything. Who is Noah Centennio's Black Adam hero, Atom Smasher? Let's find out. Here's a quick guide on who the newest addition to Dwayne Johnson's anti-hero vehicle is and what purpose he might serve in the movie. New Line and DC Shazam spin-off Black Adam has added another superhero alongside Dwayne Johnson's titular protagonist. But for the majority of people, it's hard to deny that Noah Centennial's Atom Smasher is as far from known as a known quantity as it's possible to get. Who is that masked man? Glad you asked. Atom Smasher, real name Al Rothenstein, first appeared under the name Nuklum in 1983's All-Star Squadron, number 25, as a member of the Infinity Inc., a group made up of superpowered children of World War II. Superheroes of Justice Society of America. As Nuclon, he also served as a member of the Justice League for a brief period in the mid-1990s. But for most comic book fans... It's his tenure as a member of the Reformed Justice Society of America and his relationship with Black Adam that defines the character as he's known today. Black Adam, who had spent the majority of his career as a supervillain, attempted to reform by joining the Justice Society in the 1999 comic book revival of The Property. This brought him into contact with Rothstein who had by this point ad adopted the Atom Smasher identity in tribute to his recently deceased father, who went by the superhero identity, The Atom. And there's quite a few versions of The Atom, isn't there? To say the two were a poor fit for each other is an understatement. After Atom Smasher was responsible for the death of supervillain Extan, the man who had killed his father, he and Black Adam increasingly chaffed against what they saw as unnecessary moral boundaries, that prevented them from preventing civilian casualties. The two eventually left the team and along with other anti-heroes overthrew the government of Black Adam's home country of Kandak. Installing Black Adam as the uh, country's leader, after a period of estrangement from the Justice Society, he's drafted into a mission with the team and attempts to reclaim his position as the superhero only to sacrifice his life saving Kandak from the near um, omnipotent, um, um, what is that word? or omnipotent threat of Spectre, although he was immediately revived by Black Adam using his magic lightning. Some things make more sense in the comics themselves, freed of such explanation. In the aftermath of his rebirth, Atom Smasher serves as an uneasy go-between in the communications between the US and Kanda. Due to his relationship with the Justice Society and Black Adam, he's more willing to forgive Black Adam's particularly violent and isolationist actions that, that, than most US heroes and also more likely to be heard when arguing the point of view of the US to Adam as a result of their shared history. It's a role that he accepts warily in the hopes of doing the right thing for everyone, usually at his own expense. For Adam Smasher to show up in the Black Adam movie is likely a sign that he'll serve as Adam's conscience, a role he took on from the conduct overthrow onwards, and potentially an antagonist with the best of intentions for Adam's anti-hero to rail against or when the movie needs an action scene or two. Plus, given that Atom Smasher is hardly a big name, even in the world of comics, it's possible that he could serve 
as a sacrificial lamb for the dramatic impact. Should Dwayne Johnson's cinematic Adam decide not to use magical lightning as an emergency deliberation fl device at the last minute? More information about Black Adam is expected at DC's virtual fandom event in August. And that is the place for all DC fans, every, everyone. Zack Snyder's Justice League. There will be information and the trailer there for sure. Um, there's going to be breaking news about brand new films. I'm very, very hopeful and sure we're going to hear about the future of Superman. But actually, this whole multiverse strategy, as AT&T, Warner Media, and HBO Max have been teasing ever since the announcement of DC Fandom. So I don't really know much about Atom Smasher apart from his name. Um, we know a bit more now. Um, I think he's an interesting character, and I think he could serve well for the movie. But as I said on the top of the show, I'm very, very excited about this film, seeing we're going to see the formation, or at least them appearing, uh, the Justice Society of America, which is really kind of the first kind of Justice League team. I mean, they served before uh, the Justice League. Now, what's interesting about the JLA, or the Justice Society of America, or whatever you want to call them, um, right, and we did find out a bit about them in Jeff John's um, um, Absolute Justice in Smallville, which was a feature length movie in season nine of Smallville. So if you want to go and see that um, extended episode of Smallville, you should. You'll learn a lot more about uh, the Justice Society of America, at least. Um, so it's, it's, it's very exciting uh, that they're adding all these heroes and, and I can't wait to see um, what they do with them. So exciting times ahead. Um, the Rock is really um, pushing the envelope forward with this film, and I think they've got a great director, and it's, it's basically team Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and it's a spin-off to Shazam. Eventually, Shazam will have to fight The Rock, which is so exciting, and we still don't know if Cavill Superman um, will be involved, but yes, very exciting, awesome news. I can't wait to hear more about this new um, this movie at DC Fandom. Yes, Henry Cavill is a wacky fellow, and this is what he did on Instagram yesterday. Wow, just wow, absolutely, absolute insanity. And now I can't switch it off. Let's switch it off. That is just nuts. I think he was putting together a game system or a, a PC. I don't ex know exactly what he was doing there, but it was trending on the internet. So it, it was great to see a bit of levity from Henry Cavill. He is such a nerd. A great guy. I'm so proud um, that he, he is our Superman. Now we need to talk about the DCEU fandom. And when I do this, it's normally negative. And apparently Jim Lee had created some artwork for um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, which was supposed to be a secret. And only a few trusted disciples knew about it. Well, yesterday, uh, a lot of these trusted disciples were very upset because this this artwork had been leaked. I personally haven't even seen this artwork and it's supposed to be leaked. So everybody's got their torches and they're on their horses and they're after this person who betrayed the rest of the disciples. Listen, I said this a few months ago. Zack Snyder is too trusting and he's grateful to a select amount of people for really pushing the envelope and getting the Snyder Cup released. Of course, I feel that we all helped, um, but they're very, very angry. Um, listen, this person shouldn't have broke the trust, shouldn't have posted it or whatever they did. I'm not even sure who did this. But at the end of the day, this is what I said a few months ago. Zach is too trusting. And, you know, at the end of the day, no one should have access to news, information or artwork for a movie. I mean, why? If you don't want people to see, why would you trust a bunch of basics, right? It, 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 it doesn't make any sense. And this is where we are now, and this is what the DCEU fandom actually is. We're just a bunch of ordinary basic people 
And when we see a few people becoming successful, having the trust of the director, there's a lot of jealousy out there because you think to yourself, well, hang on a minute, I help to do this as well. It, it's the same with Justice Con, isn't it? A selected few are allowed to be on it. And, you know, the rest of us just have to bow and scrape and keep on talking about it and sharing the posts and, and the information about the event. But uh, we can't be involved. And a lot of people have already been um, told off about that from the actual event organisers. And now there's this issue, isn't there? There's this kind of bone of contention from some fans. Now, as we discussed a few days ago, I got involved with a, a, a bit of, of a set to with one of the organisers over a joke I made. And I said, listen, um, I won't support this. But listen, um, I've calmed down since then. And of course, I'm going to support Justice Con. Um, I think it's a great event. It's, you know, for um, it's for suicide prevention. You know, you know, they want people to donate to that as well. Zack Snyder and Deb's involved. I've calmed down now. Of course, I'll be watching the channel and seeing what's going on. It's a great it's a great event. But also, if people don't want to plug it and don't want to be involved in it, I don't think they should be harassed or, or anything like that. And yesterday I made the point that this fandom does have different frank fractions. And I was I was attacked again, saying, oh, all, all people should be doing is being loyal to Zach. And it's like, loyal to Zach? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Look, I love a great many actors, directors, writers, artists, right? But I don't have icons of them and I don't kiss them when I wake up or before I go to bed. I love Zack Snyder as an artist. Man of Steel and BVS are two of my favourite films of all time. He did a great job with them. And I can't wait for Zack Snyder's Justice League season one, two and three and whatever else he brings to the DC Universe, right? I love the guy and he's a nice man. And I'm totally sympathetic to what happened to him and Deb with his daughter as well. And he will always have my sympathies. And I think they're a very brave couple. But at the end of the day, this loyalty to Zach, I'm just here for Zach. You want to, if that's, if that's your aim in life, right, just to do that, that's cool. But I have a great number of interests. It's not about that. But these different fractions within this fandom, it's just pathetic. And it's, and it's laughable. Uh, this one hates that one. And this one hates that one. I don't hate anyone. Even the young woman who attacked me the other day over a joke, I don't hate her. I blocked her, but I don't hate her. I feel sorry for her that she felt the need to swear at me because that's not the kind of way I was brought up uh, to act at the end of the day. But And I shouldn't have reacted either. If I'm honest, I shouldn't have reacted. I should have just ignored her or just done a laughing MOJ and moved on. That's when people are swearing at you, it's, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? But this is all part of fandoms and this is all part of Twitter and, and social media. It, it's, it's all very sad. And I think this toxicity has got worse since the announcement of Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I kind of feel that we got what we wanted. We won, but now we're becoming more venomous. And shall I tell you why? Because ordinary people getting clout doesn't work. Because an ordinary amount of, of, of people, a faction of this fandom, have got clout. Very successful YouTube channels. And then the other half of the basics, ordinary people, are jealous of that. Personally, I couldn't give a shit. I applaud everyone who's done well out of this movement. Well done. I support you. I watch a lot of your videos. You're great. It's brilliant. I'm not jealous of you. I wouldn't want to be you. First of all, I'm better looking than you. Um, I'm, I'm a better lover than you. I have a better life than you. So I don't really need to be you just because I've got a little small dwindling YouTube account and Twitter account with not many followers. It, you know, that's not the measure of success for me. I'm a trained actor. I'm a writer. Uh, excuse me, I'm developing the first English-speaking dramas on Cypriot TV um, via the Sigma Television Network. So I'm very happy and content. I won an IMAPA mobile reality show back in 2013. So I'm a very happy bunny. I don't need to get excited. Oh, Zack Snyder spoke to me. Or loads of famous people speak to me. I'm friends with many, many famous people. I don't name drop and I don't clout chase because I'm not friends with those people because they're famous, it's because they're good people and we get on and we have a good crack. And, 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 and that's it. But people who are not used to this are not used to seeing ordinary basic people, you know, getting a bit of clout, are getting upset by it. My advice to everyone is, is just calm the F down. Now, I'm going to read you something that Jay Oliver said, which was very good. So 
this all kicked off yesterday with RT Snyder Cut, this prominent account that got us all together to help, you know, um, fight to get the Snyder Cut released, making this announcement. The time has come for us to take a break from social media activities. This has been a taxing 16 months for our admins who have given up so much for you all. And with no campaigns in our near future, the time is right to refresh and prepare for the next step. Firstly, um, RT Snyder Cut, there is a big campaign going on to release the air cut. Why aren't you involved in that? This has been somewhat disappointing, not just by this account, but by many, many prominent people and everyone who fought for the Snyder Cut deciding the air cut's not worth it. And I don't understand. This is part of Zack Snyder's vision. His franchise, he brought on David Ayer to do this. That In David's original vision, there was going to be cameos and Easter eggs for Zack Snyder's Justice League. For Christ's sake, why aren't you all fighting for this? So R.T. Snyder Cut, I don't understand that. Now, of course, R.T. Snyder Cut are coming under attack for another reason for not pushing um, Justice Con. Now, there's become a bit of a division with, with Fiona, who started this whole thing off, really, uh, this movement, um, really taking sides and being attacked by others. And this is what I'm talking about. It's absolute insanity. Anyway, Jay Oliver responds to this by saying, they don't like me. I, think, I don't know if he's joking or serious. So then he comes back and he says, this tweet was attempted to poke fun of how there are apparent factions within the Snyder Cup movement. Quit with the petty BS and just come together and celebrate what we all did by getting Zach's vision restored. Well, I think people are too dumb. I think people are too dumb in this fandom to ever come together. There's always going to be this person saying that and this person and saying another, Jay. But well done for, you know, at least trying to say the right thing. He comes back. At this point, I don't care. You know I worked with Jeff many times in the past. Too right. Uh, Am um, I disqualified? Both cons are to celebrate us, the fans. Exactly. One con, Justice Con, of course, is for the Snyder movement. And that's great. And DC Fandom is for everyone. And both should be celebrated. Yes, he's worked with Jeff Johns. I like Jeff Johns, by the way. He's a great artist. Listen, we have to get over this. Jeff Johns got over his head and he did things and he took actions that I'm sure he regrets himself. But Jeff Johns is a good guy. He just didn't act like a good guy during that whole thing. He didn't act good towards Zack Snyder. He made mistakes. I hope one day he can come and just say, you know what? The pressure got to me and I did some bad things. And he's already admitted that he wasn't right. He wasn't right for the job of leading um, D DC Entertainment. Anyone, anyone. He's back again. I'm appearing for you guys. Honestly, my Saturdays are the days I catch up sleep because I sleep maybe three hours every night during the week. I'm showing up for you guys. Of course, he's talking about Justice Con. And that's what he had to say. Um, there's lots of other stuff. It, 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 just go, it just goes on and on. It's just nuts. It's absolute crazy stuff. But that's what um, Jay Oliver had to say. Jay Oliver is a really intelligent guy, as, as well as a great artist. But yeah, so in this week, I've been drawn into certain things and I've been questioning this fandom. Is it worth it? Is it worth following people from the fandom? You know, there's people that I've made friends with that I will continue um, to be with. But I've blocked quite a few people because at the end of the day, I had one argument, one disagreement with one person. And there's a certain amount of people who have unfollowed me, who came in on me. These are the same people who used to retweet me and watch the channel and say how great I am. And one thing, one argument, and that's it. That's not good. That's, that's, that's not what human beings, good human beings act like. You don't just disown people just like that. But it doesn't matter. If it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be. I'm fine with it. But at the end of the day, I've calmed down now. I'm over it and I'm not going to get involved with these petty arguments anymore. It's just not worth it. We are getting the Snyder Cut. We are fighting for the air cut, which is very exciting. I believe it's going to happen. I believe we can push this over the line. I believe the decision has already made to do, you know, to, you know, stream this on HBO Max. And that's very exciting too. But um, yes, very, very exciting times. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. And let's all just be friends. And let's just forget the beef. I know it's hard. You do have to have emotional intelligence to just kind of, what was it my mum used to say? The person with the bigger brain backs off of an argument. It, that looks like it's me.
Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. Back tomorrow for, for more DC Daily. But I might do an MCU video about Keanu Reeves, a little theory I have. Stay here with Big Mouth.